thank you for giving us this opportunity and thank you for all my courses without which this wouldn't have happened. I have five minutes, so my goal is to leave you with a couple of key messages. I will not go into the detail and I will not try and present the science. Um, what we aimed to do is, rather than look at agroforestry in kind of theoretical concept, as and it gladdens my heart to have it seen mentioned in the previous projects, what we aim to do is to look at how this can actually happen on the ground. How can this work within the UK context? So the, the logic of our approach was that agriculture covers 70% of the land in the UK, so if we want to plant trees, Maybe that's the place where we should try and do it, because this is where we have the biggest opportunity. Um, the government has spent many, many years paying farmers to rip the trees out of the landscape, and now what we are proposing is to try and make the farmers to put them back in. So there may be some, there may be some issues in here. So I'll try and, I'll try and talk, about, or talk about that. The um, focus... Oh, there we are. Uh, the focus of our, uh, our work is the southeast of England. This is arable agriculture, and this is the most profitable bit of agriculture, of uh, crops growing in the UK. Therefore, this is the place where putting trees back into the landscape is the most challenging. So briefly, just to give you an idea of what is it that we are talking about, I have an example. This is Wakelins in Suffolk. This is an agro arable forestry that is a uh, alleyway of crop and trees around it. These systems are hugely versatile. You can imagine crops and trees, you can imagine poultry and trees, vegetable and trees, and, and trees, grazes and trees. The idea is to use the uh, tree bit to sequester carbon in the trees and in the land under the trees. In arable systems, this is where one of the opportunities is because much of the carbon has been lost previously. What we, we know this. This has this proven science, we know how this works. Planting a tree and making the tree grow sequesters carbon 100% of the time, proven technology. On the other side, I have an example of biodiversity. So these systems do create habitats for bio biodiversity which previously weren't there. Uh, in agricultural setting, there is a good biodiversity and perhaps not so good biodiversity. So research needs to go into that to actually figure out how we can make use of that bit. And thing that is relevant even for GGR and for nitrous oxide emissions from the soil. For example, we know that these systems recycle nutrients and water far better than kind of the standard agriculture. So lots of benefits of these systems. Looking at carbon specifically, what Michelle Felton has done, she looked at how much carbon we can actually sequester how much carbon we can stick into these systems while still producing food. The basic uh, motivation for agroforestry is, look, we still need to produce food from the land. I guess everybody has heard about availability and the price of food lately. So this is important because we can put the trees back in and still produce, produce food. It works for carbon. You can see in, on our historical uh, model projection, you can see the accumulation of carbon in just arable lands where we assume the farmer would put 10% of the land to trees and still farm on the other 90%. So the potential just in these counties on, on our projection there from now until 2050 is about 30 uh, megatons of CO2. If we were to expand this to pasture, the uh, potential would be far larger. So anyway, between now and 2050, we are talking about hundreds of millions of tons of, of CO2 sequestered just in the trees and in the, uh, in the land underneath. So uh, this is all beautiful. Why is everybody not doing it is our question, or was our question. And so to find an answer to that, we actually want to talk to the farmers. We sent out, I think, about 2,000 questionnaires to the farmers in the southeast, arable farmers. And this is what they, this is what they told us. Uh, the first two slides are just specific to the trees. Why would you plant the trees and why would you not plant trees on your farm? So this is what, what comes out. These are the opportunities. So why would a farmer, arable farmer in the southeast of England, plant trees on their farm uh, looking at issues relating to carbon sequestration, you can see 
um, on farm potential for timber, it's very low priority. Most farmers said, this is not a clear opportunity for me, it doesn't quite work. What they did say, however, and this is where you can see the big green bars, is yes, I would plant trees on my farm because I get some fuel for heating and I get some opportunities to sell the uh, timber or, or the wood for, for heating other people's houses in my locality, which doesn't do anything for carbon sequestration because the wood is burned. Okay, so there may be an opportunity here for banks at the margin, I'm guessing. Uh, when we asked the reverse question of why would you not consider planting the trees, there is one overarching reason why not. If I just put the arrows on my slide here, you can see four of them. What they have in common is money. Trees on a farm are perceived as an opportunity cost. So as a policymaker, if I come and square this equation, I think I can start working on this. The only one that was uh, positive or where we could see this is something where things are changing is the attitude. This historically has been negative. As I've mentioned, we paid farmers to rip the trees out. This takes generations to, to undo. So the attitude of the landowner, the person that actually holds the title to the land to planting the trees, it's mildly positive now. It used to be negative because trees are perceived as an opportunity cost in this kind of in this kind of uh, business. So just to summarize, oh sorry, I have one more, I forgot. So that was relating to trees specifically and this slide is on general farming goals. Why do you farm kind of thing? So what you can see, I ordered them according to uh, importance and this is where the first issue appears, that the, tree, that the farmers were saying, look, I'm not planting the trees because this would cost me money. But if you ask them, why do you farm? Profit maximization is the least important out of these things I have on the slide. Okay, so we need to, to, to work on the attitude to the trees, to planting the trees themselves. Then I think this, this can work. And if you look at the other side, maintaining land condition. This is broadly uh, describing the farmer passing the land on to the next generation. This is very important and I think this is where, where tree can, trees can come in big time because this is where the trees can be used to maintain the land and perhaps even recover it. So that's what, that's what we found out. This is what, what we got with our short project. So the main messages or the, the main outcomes what we've learned from, from this work is that there's a number of real and or perceived advantages and disadvantages to agroforestry or to putting trees back into the farming landscape. In the UK, um, there, there has to be some uh, commercial viability. This is the key thing that needs to be addressed and we already have funding for a large project where we'll look at financial tools specific to agroforestry funding for trees in relation to carbon and to biodiversity benefits. So that's coming next. And the last thing I'll show you, this is a slight tangent, not agroforestry, but very important and relevant for afforestation in the UK. This is a different research project one of my students did and what, we, what he's done, he projected uh, several different trading scenarios on land use in Wales. So what you can see in there is the projected natural afforestation of land just because the grazers have been removed. What we explored were different kind of scenarios after Brexit of how the government does or doesn't support farmers and what does this mean for the amount of trees in the landscape. So what you can see on the last one, the E scenario, if you can work it out the most red, this is projection just to 2030. So that's eight years from now. This is not a massive uh, travel <coughs> into, uh, into the future. So if the trading relationship is not good for the farmers, you can see the trees coming back by themselves. And that's where I'll leave you. Thank you.